welcome to Crime Alley Comics. It's time for another comic book artist spotlight, and this will be episode number 23. Tonight we are going to be focusing on Mike Grell. I had someone, and I apologize, but I can't remember who it was now, uh, that left me a comment on uh, another one of my videos uh, and asked me if I was going to be doing one on Mike Grell, so I decided I would do that one tonight. So anyway, Mike Grell was born September 13th of 1947. He is an American comic book writer and artist, known for his work on books such as Green Lantern, Green Arrow, The, uh, the Warlord, and John Sable Freelance. Uh, I've got a few books here that I'll show you. I will... <laughs> I know I've got more books from Mike Grell, but with my room being in the mess that it's in right now, I, would, I, I knew where a few of them were, so I got those out, And uh, but I do have many more. I just don't have them to show you out here. I wasn't able to uh, take the time to find them because I need to get this recorded so I can get it up for you guys on Wednesday. <laughs> uh, okay, so early life. Grell studied at the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts, and he took the famous artist school correspondence course in cartooning. To avoid getting drafted into the Army service during the Vietnam War, he enlisted for four years in the U.S. Air Force, uh, including a stint as illustrator in Saigon. So while he was in Saigon, he was an illustrator. After the Air Force, Grell enrolled in the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts and also worked as a freelance graphic artist. Grell entered the comic book industry as an assistant to Dale Messick on the Brenda Starr comic strip in 1972. With DC Comics, he started with them in 1973. Uh, he moved to New York and began his long relationship with DC Comics. Uh, at DC, Grell worked on characters such as Aquaman, Batman, Green Arrow, and the Phantom Stranger uh, in arcs or in single issues or single issue stories. He and Elliot S. Magan launched the Batman family title in 1975, and Grell would work with Dennis O'Neill on the re revival of the Green Lantern Green Arrow series the following year. For a time between 1976 and 1978, Grell was writing and penciling one series, Warlord and providing pencil art on two others, Green Lantern and Superboy, and The Legend of Superheroes. His regular, yeah, his regular first assignment at DC was on Superboy and The Legend of Superheroes, a high-profile assignment for an artist with no prior experience illustrating a monthly comic book. Grell says, he got that job because he was walking in the editor's door to ask for work, literally, as the previous artist, Dave Cockrum, was walking out because he had quit. <laughs> Grell inked a Cockrum pencil story, Lost a Million Miles from Home, in issue 202, and became the penciler of the book, with issue number 203, and that was in August of 1974. I do have quite a bit of information on Mike Grell, actually, which I was glad to find. Uh, let's see. These stories were written by Carrie Bates, uh, with later issues by Jim Shooter. Grell drew all-new collector's edition, C-55, the Treasury edition, in 1978. And that was written by Paul Levitz, in which longtime legend member 
Saturn Girl, and Lightning Lad were married in this C-55 issue. Let me see now. A writer as well as artist, Grell commented, uh, Grell cemented his status as a fan favorite with his best known creation, The Warlord. The character first appeared in first issue special number eight in November 1975 and was soon given his own ongoing title, The Warlord number one, January, February, 1976. In this series, Air Force pilot Travis Morgan crash landed in the in, in the prehistoric hidden world of Scartaris, setting highly setting highly influenced a setting highly influenced by Jules Verne's A Journey to the Center of the Earth and Edgar Rice Burroughs. I'm not sure how this is pronounced, but I think it's Pellucidar. Never heard of it, so I'm not sure. <laughs> For years thereafter, Morgan engaged uh, Morgan engages in adventures dressed only in a winged helmet, wristbands, boots, and breech clouts, and armed with a sword and a 44 mag. <laughs> Grell wrote himself and editor Jack Harris into the metafictional conclusion of the story in the war, in the Warlord number no. thirty five, July nineteen eighty. Other artists took over pencil duties while Sharon Grell, his wife, as revealed in the letter the letter column of a late of a later issue, took over writing. Yeah, I was trying to find some of my Tarzan books, and I didn't didn't find those. They wasn't where I thought they were. So, but anyway, so now we'll go to Tarzan. Grell wrote and drew the Tarzan comic strip from July nineteenth of nineteen eighty one to February twenty seventh of nineteen eighty three. That that's a comic strip, except for one strip in February on February fifteenth of nineteen eighty three by Thomas Yates. These strips were reruns in newspapers in two thousand four and two thousand five. And Grell's first, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> Grell's first comic was John Sable, Freelance, and Star Slayer. Through the 1980s, Grell developed creator-owned titles such as John Sable, Freelance, and Star, Star Slayer. John Sable Freelance was published by the now defunct First Comics. Star Slayer, a space born science fiction series, started at Pacific Comics but shifted to First after Pacific went out of business. <laughs> uh, the character of John Sable Freelance was a former Olympic athlete, later an African uh, big game hunter who became a mercenary. First appearing with a cover date of June 1983, John Sable was a precursor to what would eventually be called by some the Dark Age of Comics, uh, when even long established superheroes would become increasingly grim and violent. The character was heavily influenced by Jan, uh, no, Ian, Ian Fleming. Uh, Ian Fleming's James Bond novel, as well as drawing on Pulp Fiction crime stories. Many of the stories of Sable's hunting uh, exploits in Africa were influenced by Peter Hathaway Capstick's novels. At a convention in the late 1980s, Grail stated that his idea for Sable was something like a cross between James Bond and Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer. <laughs> Sable was adapted into a short-lived television series and the character's original tale, A Story Over Eden, from the comic book, was expanded and novelized by Grell under the title Sable, 
which was published in 2000 by Top Books. Or Tor, Tor Books, not Top Books. All right. In 1987, Grell wrote and drew the three-issue prestige format limited series Green Arrow, The Longbow Hunters. He redesigned the character's costume away from the costume Neil Adams had designed in 1969 and recast Green Arrow as an urban hunter going up against non-superpowered real-world villains such as serial killers, terrorists, and street gangs, American mobsters, and Japanese yakuzas. He did, he did, he did away with Green Arrow's uh, arsenal of trick arrows and instead uh, rearmed him with penetrating broadheads with which he actually killed his opponents. The Longbow Hunters showed the first instance in which Green Arrow ever deliberately killed somebody. In the following series, this occurs frequently. <laughs> The popularity of longbow hunting, hunters led to an assignment writing and occasionally drawing an ongoing Green Arrow series from 80 issues from 1988 to 1993. During this run, Grell avoided uh, referencing the fantastical elements of the DC Universe. Uh, in guest appearance by Green Lantern, the character is out of costume and does not use his powers. He doesn't have any powers. So anyway. <laughs> Notably believing Green Arrow was a stupid name in no Mike Grell Green Arrow story, with the exception of uh, Longbow Hunters, number one, is the character ever referred to as Green Lantern anywhere other than on the cover? <laughs> Grell would write a retelling of Green Arrow's origin and very first case in Secret Origins, Volume 2, Number 38. And that was from March of 1989. He was the co writer, cover artist, uh, co writer and cover artist for Green Arrow Annual. 1991, and he drew the uh, he done the cover art for annual number five in 1992, and wrote annual number six in 1993. Uh, Grell wrote and illustrated the official post-crisis origin of Green Green Arrow in Green Arrow, the Wonder Year uh, miniseries in 1993. In 1988, Grell had a run writing Blackhawk in the short-lived anthology series Action Comics Weekly. Writing the Blackhawk series from issues 601 through 608. I told you I had a lot of information on this one. <laughs> in 1988, Grell altered and illustrated the graphic novel adaptation of Timothy Dalton James Bond of, of the Timothy, John, uh, Timothy Dalton James Bond film Licensed to Kill. And in 1989 wrote and drew an original Bond story, the three issue miniseries Permission to Die, both published by Eclipse Comics. And then uh, one of the books I have is Shaman's Tears, and that's what we're going to talk about next. Shaman's Tears and uh, Bar Sinister, which I think was put out by Image Comics. Yeah, that was by Image Comics. Shaman's Tears was a more ecologically themed outing for Grell. Main character, Joshua Brand, the son of half- Syox father and Irish mother as an adult returns to re uh, reser returns to the reservation he ran away from as a child discovering he myst mystically 
possesses the powers of all animals and the earth itself. He becomes the pro protector of the planet. John Sable guest starred in issue number five through nine of this 12 issue series, May 1993 to August of 1995. There was a number zero issue published in November of 1995. During this time period, Grell wrote and penciled a Shaman's Tears Turok Dinosaur Hunter crossover limited series for Valiant Comics and a two issue Turok limited series entitled Turok the Hunted, as well as several fill in issues of the ongoing Turok series. Then from 2002 to 2003, Grell worked on Iron Man. It was during a Grell written story from this period that Tony Stark revealed his secret identity to the world. A development met with mixed fan reactions. <laughs> After his work on Iron Man, Grell came back to comics in 2008, providing a variant incentive cover for Action Comics number 861. This was part four of the Superman and the Legends of Superheroes storyline. DC sought variant drawings for this story from artists who had worked on the, uh, the Legion in the past, such as Steve Little, Keith Giffen, and Grell. Other work included uh, a new ongoing series of The Warlord, Launched to co coincide with the 35th anniversary, Grell brought the lead character's story to an end and drew some issues. Grell worked for Marvel. Uh, Grell worked for Marvel, drawing some stories of X-Men Forever. His last collaboration with DC uh, to date has been the Green Lantern story for the DC Retroactive series in 2011, where he provided the artwork. Grell is rewriting the John Sable screenplay, working on an ad adaptation of Shaman's Tears and writing two stories of the comic, uh, oh, and writing two stories for comicmix.com, a new John Sable story and the Pilgrim with Mark Ryan. In December 2010, he was announced as editor-in-chief of Arden Entertainment. In 2012, Grell provided the cover art for the 10-page preview comic pr uh, produced by DC Comics for the 2012 San Diego Comic-Con to promote the TV series Arrow. Grell did uh, interior art for the digital comic based on the TV series Arrow, number six, and number 11. And he also received the Ink Pot Award in 1982. That's the only award they show that he's, he's received. I don't know if, they're, if he's received more or not, but that's the only one they, they point out. All right, so that's the information I have for Mike Grell. Now I'm going to show you a few books. This is Shaman's Tears number 10 by Image Comics. I think I uh, this came out of my 900 plus haul and I think there's more in there I just haven't been able to find them yet. And if you look, where's it at? Right down here at the bottom on the uh, left side of your screen, you can see his signature. But in this signature, it's a little different than most. It's just got an M and a G, where usually he spells out his name. But on that one, he did not. Okay, now, um, the other books that I was able to find, <laughs> is, uh, and, and the reason I don't have a whole lot, I, I, I know I have a lot more Mike Grell books, but since I have my 
my comic room kind of trashed at the moment and I can't really find a whole lot of things. There were a few of these books that I knew where they were, so I pulled them out so I could show them to you. This is The Warlord Annual Number 1 from 1982. And I think, yeah, right over here, uh, right below my finger, you can see printed Mike Grell. Uh, let's see, get these out of order. This is Warlord number 25. This is Warlord number 70, and down here at the bottom, right down here, uh, if I can get it up there where you can see it, there's his signature. Let's see if we can make it a little bigger for you. There we go. Okay. And then this one here is Warlord's 103. And down here at the bottom is his signature again. I think it's interesting too um, when you look at these two books. These two books uh, have very crisp collars, um, very smooth lines, and so on and so forth. But when you look at this annual that he did, it's much grainier and uh, almost looks like it's a, a, a chalk drawing that, that he added color to or something. I just really like the way he uh, presents the colors and, and, the, and the graininess and the detail in a book like this, but yet he also can go back and, and make one that's more... Uh, eye popping you know and it's got the smooth smooth textures the smooth coloring and so on i really like he, he's got a unique um art style but i like it i really like it a lot and uh, warlord is is a comic book that I've, I've never read it um i've collected a few of them i just happened to pick a few up here and there you know at different times because i like the covers or whatever but uh but yeah so that's what I have for Mike Grell. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, I did actually find some decent information. Uh, it's funny because a lot of times on some of these artists, and it doesn't have to be a newer artist necessarily, it's just some of these artists are hard to get any real good information on. And uh, but, but for him, it was pretty easy to, uh, that basically all came from one source. And, uh, and, you know, I was really happy to find that, but, uh, I, I don't, I didn't know a lot about Mike Grell personally. I didn't even know what he looked like, uh, until I done this spotlight video. And of course his picture will be on the thumbnail to this video. So if you don't know what he looks like, you can see it there. I've also got his signature long ways in the middle of the... <laughs> The middle of the uh, thumbnail so anyway that's all I have for Mike Grell if you have any suggestions for someone you would like me to do a video on please let me know leave me a comment uh, you know if you have any other information you'd like to share about Mike Grell or any of the other uh, comic book spotlights that I've done or comic artist spotlights that I've done feel free to leave information I know some people have left me some information that I didn't know and 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 I really appreciate that because you know I I I'm trying to help educate people on the artists but at the same time I'm getting educated on them myself so so I do appreciate feedback and uh, uh, information that you guys can give and I'm sure 
that other people who watch the videos, um, if they check the comments, you know, they would appreciate getting more information as well. Because I know, you know, some of these artists, I'm not a big fan of some artists, but yet I, I still do the uh, videos on because this isn't about me. This is about uh, putting out information that you guys will enjoy. And, uh, you know, even though I may not be real fond of a certain artist, I know there's guys out there that will be. So, like I said, I've picked about 65 artists so far, and now this is the 23rd, 23rd video that I've done. So, uh, I'm only about a third of the way through them, and, and I keep adding to it. So, uh, but I was real happy to, that someone, and I still can't remember who it was, that uh, left the comment and asked me if I would do a video on Mike Grell. But I appreciate that. I, I like the interaction from people. Uh, I want you to make suggestions and, uh, you know, because like I said, I'm doing this for you guys and for the community and, uh, and it's, it's, uh, improving my knowledge as well. So, uh, it's a win-win for me. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying this, doing these series. So anyway, that's all I have for tonight. Um, uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate if you would subscribe and click the bell if you want notifications. And with that, I will let you all go. Have a fantastic evening. Uh, have a great week. And we will see you all next video.